Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like your car is way faster than mine. Like, what's going on? In like you know 2016 2017 I had this like 86 e30 BMW convertible and it had a couple of things I needed to fix so it always be in my garage well which was like my apartment complex garage like not supposed to be working on the car but I be working on the car on the weekends uh, and actually one of my co-workers um, great guy named Daniel lived in the same building as me and he was an engineer so he liked to come tinker and he was like I should get a project car too and, but he wanted a Miata so he starts looking for Miatas on Craigslist, and uh, there's one really clean one, uh, but the guy was a little weird, like, we're gonna be at the police station, blah, 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 very dramatic, and um, he couldn't get the money fast enough, and he was like, I'm gonna be at the police station at three o'clock, I have multiple people coming. It was like, he was like, first person to get here gets this car, and it was a really good deal, so he missed that one. I guess the next weekend, this one pops up in Birmingham, Alabama, and it it's a little rough around the edges. <laughs> it's listed for like, 2400 bucks or so. He calls the woman who owns it and he's like, oh, I'm calling about your Miata. And she's like, yeah, yeah. Like no negotiations. Like, yeah, just get here tomorrow, $1,200, you can have it. He's like, oh, okay. Like hangs up. And I was like, dude, if that thing drives across the parking lot, you buy it. It's worth more than that in parts. Like, so we hop in the car, went to Birmingham. <laughs> she arrives with like, you know, her husband behind her. And like, here's the car, and like, you know, it had these like dingy, like kind of cheap chrome wheels. Like uh, the, the top had a rip in it, or it's more of the zipper was ripping. So you had to have like a jack stand to hold the glass of the top up. But I was like, dude, like I said, buy this thing. So it got in, I, I drove it around the, the parking lot and ready to go. He was not that good at driving stick shift yet, but I was like, you're gonna learn. So I was like, you're driving this thing back to Atlanta. And he like limped it back to Atlanta. And uh, it had a ton of issues, <laughs> um, to say the least. At least. A lot of them, you know, weren't even really known at the time, but particularly the sensors were like really bad. So what it meant is that the car would either just like stall at any given time. So I remember rescuing him, like he stalled on the freeway, somehow got off, then stalled somewhere. and. Um, because I was the reason he got this car. I always felt compelled, like, okay, I gotta go. I'll come, I'll come help you anywhere. It was kind of like that. Or, you know, it would, you'd have to, you'd be in traffic, you'd have to constantly be giving it gas. So you're like trying to, you know, be on the brake. You're like just trying to like, you know, heel toe it to keep it from stalling. Just all kinds of drama. Wife was like, let him have his fun, but she was like, you know, uh, I think she couldn't see the potential of it because it was just such a basket case car. So they moved to Minnesota. And I was out in LA. She sent me a text like, hey, I left you a surprise, uh, you know, goodbye present, you know, before we left town. I know you're gone, but it's like your house just waiting for you. Come home from LA, the Miata's out front, the title and the keys are under my doormat. Like, I couldn't believe it. I was just like, oh man, that, like, what a gesture, you know? Um, I owe him a Miata someday. Uh, I, I, in the rising in value, I gotta go buy one soon. So I suddenly had this Miata that, you know, needed some attention, needs some work. It was fun, it, and I kind of liked it as this like cluster of a Miata. It got around, put the top down, it was like fun, horribly slow. And then uh, one day, uh, Bandy came over, and he had his, uh, his Miata. I was like, yeah, it's really slow. He's like, uh-huh. And so we ended up just hopping his car, we hopped onto I-20, and I went, wait, whoa, 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 like <laughs> your car is way faster than mine, like what's going on? He's like, like what? It's like, no, no like, this, my car doesn't, feel like this, go back to my house. You go back to the house, I was like, no, you drive mine. And he was like, oh, something's terribly wrong with your car. <laughs> and uh, I sent it up to R Speed, their great shop over in Smyrna. And uh, he was like totally mistimed. Like it actually was not the factory motor. It was like a junkyard motor. They, they like found some records. It, it had been like kind of Frankenstein together. But yeah, terribly out of time. And uh, so they, they did a whole tear down of the engine, like not all the way, but they took like the head off and like big service. And also I said, let's start fixing some of the little odds and ends. I was still like dipping my toe in the Miata world. That when I picked up that car, I went to their exit and I hit the gas like I normally had to because of this engine with no power. 
and the tires just right? And I was like, what? And the smile on my face when that car took off was like, that was the beginning of my love of the Miata that I never knew what happened. And it was funny because growing up, my bedroom at my parents' house in Houston, where I'm from originally, you know, kind of, we looked over our, our, the side of our house, like the, the yard. I could see into like our neighbor's back, like kind of carport area, they had like a three car garage. The husband had a, like a black in a Miata as his weekend car. And I could see him pull it out on the weekend. And I was like, oh, that's cool. But it never really developed from that to anything else. But like here, you know, <laughs> decades later, I was starting to get hooked. Now that I believed in it, it <laughs> I always joke it was like the most expensive gift, free gift anyone's given me because there's just so many things you can do to make a Miata better. Like tons of country, like, you know, fortune coilovers, right? The steering wheels, the seats, the harnesses, the exhaust systems. I just started getting obsessive about the car and, you know, I won't even say what, like, what I've spent, um, but I'm, I, know, I now no longer have things that I can like do to it. The cool part about it was I used to track my 997 before grad school. And I kind of stopped going to the racetrack when I was going to grad school and I wanted to get back into it when I you know, graduated. So I had this Miata that I was kind of purpose building to be like a track car. And now it's like, it's so geared for the track. It's like not even fun to drive around town anymore. So, you know, I take it to road Atlanta, to Barber in Alabama, up to Atlanta Motorsports Park a lot. Hopefully do some more tracks um, in 2021. And I didn't know how bad of a driver I was before because the software in the 911 and the wide tires like mask so many mistakes and corrections for you make corrections for you that this car is like it's just raw it's 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 totally you know <laughs> um there's no nothing like a tron like no electronic thing about it it's manual input got skinny tires relatively speaking it's lightweight it's momentum car no power to save you and it it created a new chapter so first was like reviving the car and now it's like learning how to master the car on the track and that has just been a whole new adventure. And it's really cool because, especially when we start picking up more speed, learning how to get the car to do what you need to do. And, and I've been bitten a few times. Like I, that car is much, very like understeer happy, but when properly unsettled, it will like whip around. And I whipped around in 10A at Roland, which is like the big back straight into, and I mean, petrified, petrified. Cause there's like cars, ch -ch -ch. Um, and, uh, but you learn, you get bucked off the horse, but you get back on it. And the cool thing that's really fun is that I do a lot of the PCA track events still, even though there are not a lot of Miatas out there. And you know, sometimes you feel like <laughs> the guy at the, the track with your Miata at the Porsche event. And it's kind of cool because it's my group. Like I'm starting now to keep up with guys in like Boxsters or like 996s, which is more of like the, the skill and again, the corners versus having the horsepower. So yeah, it's just been really, really cool, cool journey. And again, like I, I think I've got another two years where I can keep tracking this thing and, and learning. I've always loved cars, almost like art. And also, you know, you want to go fast, like, you know, just secure like, the engine. And that's kind of what I was chasing with getting like, you know, M5s and M3s or like my childhood dream car for like the look. I remember like I would have the M3 in the garage and sometimes I go to the window and I turn on the light and I would just like, just like look at it for a few minutes, right? And the Miata has a little bit of that, but I never had so much fun like growing with the car, you know, learning to wrench on it a little bit because I was familiar with BMW, didn't know much about Mazdas, and then learning how to drive it and work on my own skills on the racetrack was just uh, an adventure I never could imagine was possible with the Miata. But now I'm a believer, and I feel like every single person needs to experience it. Like. I think it's really true. They, you get hooked when you drive it for the first time. And it's been funny how many people have let borrow it that the smile puts on their face because it's just pure driving. And those engineers who designed that thing <laughs> at Mazda, like, man, what an incredible story. We'd like to thank this month's VinWiki sponsor, Carly, and their connected car system. Their OBD device plugs into just about any car, 96 and newer, and gives you unprecedented access to exactly what's going on with your car. You get not only diagnostic codes to see exactly what's faulting, which tends to be a lot in my case, but you can also do different coding to certain cars, particularly BMW and Volkswagen products. So visit the link in the description below and you can use the code VinWiki for a discount. They'll tell you 
you exactly what their device can do on your specific car, but at the very least, it works as the best OBD scanner that I've ever seen. I usually end up just buying the cheap ones at Advance Auto Parts and then inevitably losing them. This one works with an app on your phone. It checks everything, and I don't have to go Google the code. It tells you exactly what it is. And so I've liked playing around with it the last few weeks. I'm gonna keep one with me on all my road trips coming up, but be sure to check them out and try one out for yourself.